Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program. Here we are in advanced class number 131, looking at the material from the last class on Friday. And I can say on Friday because if, if you're listening on the radio, then today should be Monday. But sometimes these classes repeat. But uh, you might be out in the wild world of the Internet, and you could be listening on any day of the week. But here we are, and for me, this is Monday, class number 131, the advanced portion. A little review of to make a mess of something. Basically, it just doesn't turn out well. They just, yeah. Alguna vez te ha salido muy mal una receta? Have you ever made a mess of a recipe? Have you ever just made a mess of it? A recipe. Receta. Recipe. When we're talking about preparing food. Have you ever made a mess of a recipe? A complete mess? A right mess, you could say as well. Kind of British English there to say a right mess. He made a right mess of it. Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone who always makes a complete mess of things? Yes. I know someone who always makes a complete mess of things. Yeah. Did you make a mess of the dinner last night? Yes, I made a mess of the dinner. Sorry, I made a mess of that dinner. It just didn't turn out well. To turn out. Salir. To turn out, as as the end result, it didn't turn out well. Mm. Did she make a Did she make a mess of the pie? No, she didn't make a mess of the pie. It turned out very well. It tasted great. Did you make a mess of the cake? Yeah, I made a mess of the cake, the uh, chocolate cake. Yeah. Did they make a mess of the pizza? They made a pizza. Did they make a mess of it? Yes. They made a mess of the pizza. Yeah. Okay, now the next thing that we saw, we were practicing with with different clauses here. Um, and and we're this is something that can be a bit tricky. The use of the word that. So there are times when, when we can when we can omit it. So basically when we have noun, subject, and verb, the word that is not necessary. For example, the movie you saw was in Chinese. The movie that you saw was in Chinese. But when we have noun and then a verb without the subject, we need to use the word that. The house that is next to the river is blue. Okay? She bought a dress. The dress was pink. Here you can say, the dress she bought was pink. Of course, you can include that if you want and say the dress that she bought was pink. Okay? I bought a car. The car was secondhand. The car you bought was secondhand. The car that you bought, you can say as well, was secondhand. The book is on the table. The book is blue. The book that you bought. The book that you bought, wait a minute now, I'm sorry, not the, not the book you bought, the book is on the table. So the book that is on the table, that's it, the book that is on the table is blue. Mm, yeah. Ah, the dog is under the table. The dog is fat. The dog that is under the table is fat. We did the job. The job was difficult. The job we did... How was it? Oh, it was difficult. The job we did was difficult. Of course, we can always include, if we want to include here, the, the word that, we can include it. The job that we did was difficult. Oh, he bought a new computer. The computer was expensive. The computer he bought was expensive. All right. Expression of the day. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time now for our expression of the day. Yeah, before we move on to the new material here, in class number 131, we can look at our expression of the day, which is in a fix, or to be in a fix. We also have the expression to be in a bind, in a bind, in a fix. This is to be in an unfortunate situation, an undesirable situation, a difficult situation. We're in a fix here. The car broke down, and I don't have my cell phone. I don't have my mobile phone with me. We're in a fix. We have a problem. We're in a fix. So to be in trouble, to be in a fix, to be put into a difficult situation, well, to be in a difficult situation, to be in a fix. If you didn't speak a single word of English and you had to work in London, you'd be in a fix. It would be difficult. You would be in a fix. You would have you would have some problems there. You would be in a fix. So in a fix is our expression of the day. Now as we move into class number 131, we can talk about the structure to brush up on, to brush up on something. Now, to brush up is essentially darle un repaso. Mejorar es algo estudiando. I'm not going to lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. I need to brush up on my Spanish. I'm sure you've heard me. You've been listening to me read these sentences, these translation sentences. And I'll admit it. I need to brush up on my Spanish. I'd like to brush up on my Spanish. I'd like to improve through studying, through effort. I'd like to improve my Spanish. I'd like to brush up on it. Now, very often, though, very often we brush up on things. It means that we, we have some knowledge. We've been working on that thing for a while, usually. This is, this is implied. that We've been working on this topic for a while. And, and I mean, we, we want to improve, right? We're not starting from scratch which is an expression that we saw here on the program, to start from scratch, desde cero. No, no. I already have some knowledge of Spanish. It's, my Spanish just isn't perfect, so I'd like to brush up on it. Also, I studied French. A lot of people ask me when I tell them I'm from Canada. They say, are you from the French part or the English part? And, well, the reality is, there. yes, there is the... F Okay, entre comillas, French part. So, in the, in quotation marks here, quote, unquote, French part, which, the province of Quebec. They speak French in the province of Quebec. But there are also French regions or French communities in the, let's say, English part of Canada, or parts, and... um towns where people speak French, or even mixed into towns, there are people who will just, you know, maybe among their family, they speak French from different backgrounds. But, but yes, officially, the province of Quebec, which is one of 10 Canadian provinces, is officially French. The province of New Brunswick, which is to the immediate east of Quebec, is officially bilingual with English and French. They speak what they call Acadian French there. And uh, so I, I studied in French. I studied geography and history and mathematics in French. But now, since high school, I haven't really practiced. So I would like to brush up on my French. I'd like to brush up on it. Yeah, improve it. Yeah, I, I could use the work. I could use the practice to brush up on my French. I, I would like to do it. Yeah. Um, to brush up on your driving skills. I, I'm sure I would have to brush up on my driving skills before doing a, a driver's test in Spain. I have my license, my driver's license, but I'm sure that I would have to brush up on my driving skills before, um, you, know, you know, before applying for my license here in Spain. Yeah, it would be necessary to brush up on my skills. Yeah. Would you like to brush up on your knowledge of history? 
world history? Would you like to brush up on it? Yeah? It's good to know things about history. It's good to know history. I'd, I'd like to brush up on my history, to be honest. So to brush up on, darle un repaso, mejorar estudiando algo, okay? Phrasal verb right there, to brush up on. All right, now we can move on. We have our translation list coming up. But first, let's look at our five words of vocabulary. Vocabulary of the day. All right, the first word today. Here we are looking at our five words of vocabulary. Vocabulary of the day. The first word is bis. Bis. Yay. We're clapping. We're cheering. Encore, we say, which is a word that we steal from French. Yeah. We, 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 we borrow a lot of words in English from other languages, and we don't always translate them into English. Like a lot of things, we, we translate, uh, well, in Spanish, I think you, you translate more. You translate everything, it seems, into, into Spanish, you know, like uh, Michael J. Fox, you know, <laughs> Michael J. Fox, right? His mother didn't call him Michael J. Fox. She called him Michael J., but in Spain, you translate everything into Spanish. So in, in English, we, we, we adopt this French word, encore, or déjà vu. But uh, we, we take these and we, we keep them in French. So bis, we say encore. So fondo, aguante, to aguante, we say endurance, endurance. And we have the verb to endure. Endure. Agotado. I'm completely... Agotado? Exhausted. Exhausted. Insolación. Oh, he spent all day on the beach and he didn't drink enough water. He got sunstroke. Sunstroke. Supervivencia. This is survival. Survival. Survival of the fittest. All right. Now, we are done with our vocabulary, so we can now move on and take a look at our translation list. Translation. All right, friends. Yes, it is time for our translation list. Today, translation list number 44. Are you ready? Oh, good, good, good. Okay, number one. Él no se presentó hasta mucho más tarde. He didn't show up. To show up. He didn't show up until much later. No se presentó. He didn't show up. Phrasal verb, to show up, to appear for an event or gathering. He didn't show up until much later. Number two. ¿Cómo se supone que debe hacerse? How is it supposed to be done? How is it supposed to be done? Number three. Prefería jugar al tenis que ir al dentista. Bueno, yo también. I'd rather play tennis than go to the dentist. I don't blame you. I'd rather play tennis than go to the dentist. The dentist. Yeah, I'd rather play tennis than go to the dentist. I'd rather. Infinitive. No two after rather, okay? I would rather play. I'd rather play tennis than go to the dentist. Number four. Así soy y no lo puedo evitar. That's how I am, and I can't help it. No lo puedo evitar. I can't help it. Number five. Déjame esa decisión a mí. Leave that decision up to me. Leave that decision up to me. Number six. Avísame en cuanto estés listo. 
let me know as soon as you're ready. Let me know as soon as you're ready. Number seven. Hay muchos factores que influyen en mí. There are a lot of factors that influence me. Remember, we don't normally use much or many in the affirmative. Here, a lot of. There are a lot of factors that influence me. Number eight. No dejes que ello te deprima. Don't let it depress you. Don't let it depress you. Okay. Number nine. Tardé un año en acostumbrarme a la comida. It took me a year to get used to the food. It took me a year to get used to the food. Number ten. Dan por sentado que sabes álgebra. They take for granted, or they take it for granted, los dos, that you know algebra. They take it for granted that you know algebra. They assume that. Oh, he must know algebra. They take it for granted that you know algebra. Number 11. Aquí la temperatura apenas baja a los 15 grados. Here, the temperature hardly ever drops below 15 degrees. Yeah. Aquí la temperatura apenas baja de los 15 grados. Here, the temperature hardly ever drops below 15 degrees. Number 12. Siempre llevo una camiseta debajo. I always wear a t-shirt underneath. Underneath. Yeah. Debajo. I always wear a t-shirt underneath. All right, friends. I want to thank you for listening. I hope you did well on that translation list. I have to stop now because we're running out of time. But I'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place. My name is Kyle. I hope you have enjoyed today's program. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.